Welcome back, everybody. If you're new, my name's Nicholas, and this is Investing Against the Gray. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, whatever part of the world you're from, uh, you know, just thankful for yourself and take this time to to maybe just you know give thanks to all the stuff you have, the people you love, um, you know, the the moments, the opportunities you have. You know, whether you have a stomach full of food, roof over your head, loved ones to to call family. You know, it's this is a time, at least in our country, in the United States, to really think about the world in a bigger in a bigger scope outside of just you know our country our borders our our differences uh religion politics it's, it's a moment for us to give thanks for for each other and humanity in general so i love this holiday because of that it, it transcends all of these you know p- these divisions that we have in our society and it's just everybody kind of coming together as a human race and to me that's beyond beautiful all right Today, we have arguably one of the best gifts we could have possibly asked for from Elon Musk. Let's go ahead and uh, kick things off with that, and let's take a look at this. Let me make this a little smaller. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a heads up. Because it is Thanksgiving, I've got a turkey in the oven. I will not be editing this video at all, so it's going to be raw. But here we go. Elon Musk tweeted, Tesla full self driving beta is now available to everyone in North America who requests it from the car screen, assuming you've bought this option. Congrats to Tesla Autopilot AI team on achieving a major milestone. So first of all, kudos to to the teams, 100% love what Elon said said here. They've done a phenomenal job. I mean, the the rate of improvement just seems to be happening faster and faster and, and each iteration seems to be an even bigger leap forward than the previous. So beyond, beyond excited about this. Now, to put this in perspective, we essentially now have gone from 160 FSD beta testers to it now being wide release and anybody can use it who's already purchased the option, which it adds, I mean, who knows, the number could be anywhere from 300,000 to 500,000 um, FSD beta te- uh, testers in total now. And I don't even know if you call them testers at this point. Well, I guess it still is because it's in a beta, but, but the point is, we have so many more people now who are part of this program and this is a big big deal now i've talked a lot about this before i don't think it's so much of a big deal um about you know about how how we how we get the data um i think it's important to get a lot of data but what's more important to me is the software that they use to distill all the data right because at the end of the day if we have all the data in the world but we don't know how to parse it out and pull out what's important then it's pointless and so the reason i'm really excited about this going wide release uh, from a beta perspective is because now all this extra data that that the um that the uh the team's gonna be using they can now go and query for even more nuance and specific type edge <laughs> sorry if you hear noise upstairs it's thanksgiving we're cooking <laughs> but But it allows them to go and really start pulling out more nuanced details and maybe get even more clips of certain similar type of situations that they're trying to iterate on. And all this does is it makes that flywheel go faster and faster. So this is this is pretty heavy. This is I I think for people who understand what they're looking at, this is a a next level uh, move that we are going through now. It's this is essentially the signal of the beginning of this S curve, in my opinion, because up to this point. You know, it's been a who's going to solve this problem? Who's going to get there? Who's going to be able to do it? Will it be Tesla? Will it be Waymo? Will it be Cruise? And I would say that this wide release is a big step forward for Tesla to say, nope, it's us. We're leaders. We're, we're going to be the ones to solve this. Now, just because it goes wide re- release doesn't mean that it's solved, right? There's still many things to, to be solved for um, in order for this to be ready for like a robo taxi type situation. But the reason I think this is just yet another signal of this being a very big deal that a lot of people might miss is that they would not have gone to wide release if they didn't have a lot of confidence that essentially they are there. They just need to knock out a few things that have been low hanging fruit that they've just kind of neglected or avoided because it wasn't that pressing compared to other very difficult architectural or problems that they had to solve. So for instance, things like no right on red. 
do you not think that they could have solved that by now if they wanted to? I mean, it would have been so, so fast. It's such low hanging fruit that they didn't even really worry about it. I mean, think about it. They can identify stop signs. They can identify yield signs. They can identify speed limits. So no right on red. It's just, it's such a rare occurrence that they probably haven't worried about it. So with this new iteration uh, with version 11, which will be the, the full stack, what I can see happening is now they, they turn their focus into that full stack, making sure FSD beta is working well in the highways. Hopefully it's working better than AP is. And really we're not, re we're not going to know that until we have FSD beta testers using it on the highway. So, so I think that will be the, the next big thing. It's just making sure we knock that out. And I think they haven't really worried about highway because they've known or they've thought that that's such an easy problem to solve that it won't be that big of a deal. So now they're doing that. After that, it's going to be parking lots and just how do we navigate through that? And again, I think they think that's a, a fairly simple problem to solve. And then from there, that's where we start knocking out all the little stuff, the the um, the construction areas that say, you know, no traffic uh, through here. Uh, or road work ahead, or no rights on red, um, you know, just uh, all these like little nuanced signs, the, those little stop sign kind of thing for pedestrians that, you know, you don't have to stop if there's no pedestrians, but you stop if there's a pedestrian, right? Just working all those types of signs into the logic so that it trains on it. That, that's going to be such easy stuff for them to solve. Um, U-turns, right? Being able to figure out U-turns, that's going to be something they'll probably focus on. Um, having the ability to reverse when, when it makes sense on its own, that'll be, that'll be a big one. But this is it. Like, I, I feel like we're getting there. And if you really think, think about all those things I just mentioned, all right, all those things, which seem like they can probably solve those pretty, pretty easily at this point, right? If they, if they want to, like maybe give it three months and they'll, they can probably solve for all those things. Now, think back to where we were at the beginning of 2022 all right essentially nobody really ever had any zero disengagement drives or zero intervention but from that moment to today look at how much progress that we have made so much progress now if you ask me going from the beginning of 2023 to the end of 2023 it, it seems very unrealistic to think that this won't be a solved problem and if that's the case, it all kind of starts to, to make sense with Elon's time schedule with with FSD beta or FSD and robo taxis out on the road by 2024. I think Elon said volume production of robo taxis in 2024, which means they need to do an unveil in 2023. And it all it's starting to really line up. So if you haven't experienced uh, the latest versions, um, you should have it by now, I think. I think everybody's pretty much gotten 10.3.1, but extremely human-like, very, very, very smooth, and it's understanding things ahead of time, positioning itself in the right lane before it needs to. You know, the the acceleration is smooth, right? There's like a lot of these little nuanced things that it's just, it's just buttery smooth. Now, I mentioned a lot of the things that they still need to work on. There, there's like a hot topic, I would kind of say, where people are worried about snow, right? FSD beta being able to go into snow. Um, for the FSD beta release, I don't think this is a big deal because at the end of the day, humans are still responsible for taking over. And I know a lot of people have talked about like it should be disabled in snow, but like that, like that's kind of a wrong way to think about this. That's backwards thinking. If anything, we, you know, you want data of the vehicle driving in snow. So, you know, use it. And if you need to take over, take over. But I don't think, I, I don't think it's uh, something that you should just not have. Um, I can understand like the safety risk if you like slide out because you go too hard or whatever. But again, that's why you're a beta tester. That's why you need to be cognizant of what you're doing. But either way, I, I don't think that's gonna be a tough one for them to, to solve. I mean, it's, it's literally just going to be, you know, how, how you accelerate based on certain conditions, based on snow. Um, it, it'll, they'll probably get to a point where it's going to be able to identify things like black ice. And, and to be frank, humans suck at driving on snow. And I know a lot of people, especially a lot of people that I know, always try to act like, you know, they're this big macho per. It's always men. But they always try to act like they're this big macho person who has so much experience and they know how to drive in snow. And the truth is, I mean, they're not that great. Like, it's just the truth. You know, they know how to drive slower, which 
that would be smart if that could be, you know, like, like an automatic chill mode in snow, but I don't know. Anyways, I guess I'm deviating from the point. The point is, I don't think this will be hard for them to iterate on and figure this out. I think they can probably do this really quickly. It's just that it's not the it's it's just it's just not that common of a situation. And I've already seen videos of people driving in snow after the roads been plowed and FSD beta is working perfectly in that. So it's more so just when there's actually a layer of snow on the ground where, you know, Again, you might slip, you might slide out, you might just, you know, over or accelerate out of a turn too quickly. And that's, you know, cause you to spin out or black ice, right? But black ice is no different than if you hydroplane when there's a lot of rain, you know, it, these things happen and they happen to humans and how we react to that, that can all be, that can all be figured out. So I don't really worry too much about that. So again, Congratulations to the beta team, to the autopilot team. What they are accomplishing is so phenomenal. This is groundbreaking. I really wish more people understood this, but I think I think over 2023, people are really going to start to understand this. There, it's really going to become apparent that in the progress, it's just going to get better and better. At this point, it's like a spiral staircase, right? And as they iterate, as they bring out releases, all all that's happening is this spiral staircase is just it's just moving up right? That's all that's happening. So version 11 is going to be extremely exciting. All right. So let's pivot here. <laughs> that just made, made me think of a uh, friend's pivot, pivot. Um, uh, let's talk about uh, some, let's talk about Tesla stock. So let me put this up here. I'm not really sure what I'm putting up here. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna, this, this should be a nice transition. Okay. So um, the Fed pivots before FSD beta wide release end of year book it. So I put this on, I put this on my, uh, on Twitter and I pinned it, um, back in October 6, I believe. And so the reason I'm showing this now as a kind of transition is because we got the Fed meeting minutes, um, at 2 PM on Wednesday. And essentially what we got from that is that a lot of the Fed members believe it's time to really start slowing down rate hikes, right? At, to move away from the 75 base point rate hike. And Jerome Powell kind of signaled that already to us, but you could tell he was trying to temper down the markets, essentially saying, you know, now it's not about aggressively getting to a certain number. Now it's about getting to a higher number over a longer period of time, like slowly drawing it out. But this is a sign of a pivot. Now a pivot, I mean, we can all have our own definitions for what it means, but to, in my opinion, a pivot is when you're going away, you're, you're starting to moderate from being this ultra hawkish person, right? Like hopefully you're not, um, using, using, um, very strong language to, you know, make people think that you're the next Paul Volcker and that you're going to get set send rates up to, you know, 15%. So this is a change of course. And to me, that is a pivot. And so by doing lower rate hike. So 50 basis points, what we expect in December, you give time to let these rates work through the system and you give, it gives the fed a chance to really try and create a soft landing, which essentially means avoiding a recession, which in my opinion, we have been in, but that's neither here nor there. The point is we are pivoting in my opinion. And I think the Wednesday, 2 PM release no or uh, <laughs> minutes, uh, kind of really indicate that that's, what's going to happen. And we'll know 100% concrete in December if really Jerome Powell's speech and these minutes were the beginning of this pivot. Now, if they are, that makes the, this pin tweet accurate because we had FSC beta go wide release uh, last night. So this Fed would have pivoted before this. So anyway, it's just something interesting to, to take note of here. But What's more important is that this could be a good sign for Tesla stock, especially going to 2023, because think about it. If we go ahead and the Fed has a pivot, the market's going to try to get ahead of this, right? They're going to try to rally. Now, up to this point, Tesla as a stock has been suppressed for all kinds of different reasons. And we went down 7% the other day for what, right? It's people are saying it's this Twitter noise and all this drama and all this saga. In my opinion, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just people are trying to, you know, sell out because they're trying to get out of a riskier environment. Maybe they're getting margin called. Um, you know, th there's all kinds of reasons what could be happening right now. But 
we're seeing signs of inflation come down, which I mean, from 9.1 down to 7.7, it's trending down. All right. And I would say that's going decently fast. Um, would it be nice to be faster? Yeah, sure. But it shows that what's happening is working. And what we really see is that these numbers are still lagging, right? They're still lagging um, what the actual data is in real time. It's kind of sad that we don't have real time data for these things in 2022. Like you would think like there'd be a way to like, if you know what you're basing in a CPI on, right? Like they, they do like different things like, oh, how much are cars selling for? What about bread? What about a gallon of milk? Like, you know, they, they it's like these basket of things that they look at. You should be able to have a real time ticker of what that looks like. Like that should not be something that we're taking a whole month to get all this data for. Right, like that should be a live number that you know we can know ahead of time. And if that were the case, I don't think we would still be raising rates right now. But that said, that's not the case. We are where we are. But we do see inflation coming down, and so I I can see the Fed will probably start slowing down the rate hikes, and they'll get to a point where they eventually pause, and then maybe over some time we'll start to see rates get actually cut, and so. The stock market is going to get way ahead of this, way before any of that happens, is, is my, my, my prediction. The housing market is going to get crushed. The housing market, the, the problem is there, nobody wants to buy and nobody wants to sell right now. Because if you sell, what are you going to buy? You're going to sell your current house that you probably have a mortgage on that's anywhere from a 2 to a 4% interest rate to what? To trade up to a 7% interest rate? No, no, th that'd be insane. And you'll probably get less house than what you wanted. Now, on the other hand, there are some people who will be very savvy investors. And hopefully I am one of those people if I can find the right deal, but who will have a longer term perspective. And again, this is why this channel is more than just Tesla. It's also about investing, right? We invest against the grain. And that means going for long term and essentially going all in on companies we really believe in, a la Tesla. But I do have a, a dream, a vision of buying my forever home, uh, our forever home, our family home that we want to build in a certain community that's close by to where I live. And so I'm constantly looking for a, a house, a lot that's the right size at the right price that we could purchase. And, you know, maybe we start construction right away, or maybe we just buy it, rent it out until we're ready. Or maybe we go ahead and buy it, rent out the current house we live in since it's in downtown. And then we just move into the other house. Who knows? But the point is, I'm looking for a good deal because while rates are up, we're going to see prices start to come down right to balance that out especially if people are trying to move their if people are trying to move the inventory and so as those prices come down i would rather pay for those higher interest rates in the short term and then maybe in five years refinance down to a lower rate but at least i locked it in at those lower prices right so and again this is for like you know the forever home kind of idea Anyways, so I do think housing will take the brunt of, of the rest of the pain that is to be had because of these interest rate hikes. Look, for Tesla as a company, as a stock, like the company doesn't need, th these interest rates really shouldn't matter for, for Tesla as a company. And the reason I say is because they don't need debt, right? They don't need to, to sell stock anymore for, for funding their initiatives. They don't need to take on debt to fund their initiatives, right? They're, they can essentially fund everything from their cash pile at this point. And so these rates really don't have a big effect on them. What they have an effect is on the stock because people get spooked out and people see Tesla as a risky investment. When you see it as a risky investment during these type of times, a lot of people, companies, firms, they want to rotate out of, of growth and risk into something that's more certain, like a, like a, like a Johnson & Johnson or a Walmart. Or, well, maybe Walmart's not a good example, but more of these um, blue chip type companies. But hear me out. I think this is a huge mistake. I think it's beyond clear. I mean, from a company perspective, it's, I'm going to speak out of both sides of my mouth. So give me a second here. Let me just make sense of this. Tesla as a stock has proven to be very volatile and very risky to be in. However, if you assume that the stock would reflect what the company is actually doing, Tesla should be one of the safest companies to invest in during these types of periods. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen that way, but I think over the long term, it will. It'll prove out to be like that. 
right? Remember, Apple wasn't always this strong, sturdy company that we, we know as today, right? Apple used to fluctuate a lot as well. Maybe not quite as much as Tesla, but it wasn't this bellwether, just put your money in there and leave it. And, you know, when bad times are bad, it'll be less for Apple. When good times are good, it should be a little better for Apple. But let me let me prove this out by showing some data. Okay, so let me pull this up. Hopefully this comes up okay. All right, yep. So like I said, I'm not gonna edit this, so just give me a second, bear with me. I, I, want, I really wanna put this up. I, I think this is a important, um, an important tweet that really gives perspective from Bradford Ferguson. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see this. All right, so Bradford Ferguson wrote, 99% of the excuses I hear for being bearish on Tesla are not fundamental to the business. For example, look at the chart, slow grind down, Twitter, these clowns don't know what's going on in the actual business, which is why you own the stock. They, did, they didn't see these charts. And here he has like some charts essentially showing different numbers. Um, I don't know if I can show all of them. Let me see if this can zoom in a little bit. So you can see, for example, um, like three months to our Q2 2022, you can see you know Tesla is the only one that's really showing any growth. Operating margins, again, you know, uh, Tesla is just kind of crushing it down here. You can see it 17%. Uh, sales growth, uh, most recent quarter, Tesla, again, is crushing everybody. So t Tesla is just doing amazing is, is the real point. Now, um, the reason I want to show this is because I run into this all the time as well, as far as these type of arguments. And I imagine you do as well. I hear people sit there and say, oh, well, Tesla is is too expensive or it's overvalued or, you know, or just stuff like that. But it's like, okay, well, what are you basing this off of? Are you basing it off of their gross margins? Because that wouldn't make any sense because their gross margins are best ever in the world. Are you basing this off of units sold? Okay, cool. But as we can see, based on you know net income the more you sell that does not mean you make more money it, your margins on what you sell equate to what matters really and so let's just kind of hit hit this nail on the head um with another tweet here we can see um from uh, matthias and he says here's how the u.s automakers fared against each other so far this year q1 to q3 so for the first three quarters on three metrics vehicle sold, auto operating income, and an operating income um, per vehicle sold. All right, so so let's look at these uh, together in, in more detail. And again, let me just let me just draw this down a little bit here. Okay, so, so, so let's look at this. All right, so let's start off with um, vehicle sold. So Ford sold 3 million vehicles. GM sold 4.3 million vehicles, and Tesla sold 9 million vehicles or at 9 million, uh, 900,000. So 3 million, 4.3 million, 900,000. So 3X more than Tesla, almost 4.5X more than Tesla. Tesla well, didn't even cross a million in the first three quarters. Now, if this is your metric, and you always hear like Gordon Johnson, people talk about this, like if this is your metric, just units sold, then you're missing the whole point of investing, right? You're not understanding what matters. And this is the, the issue I run into with so many people because let's, let's break it down with the numbers, right? You could equate to this to being like, I worked this amount of hours. I worked this amount of hours and I'm over here working the fewest amount of hours yet making the most money. Who do you want to be, right? Like it's the exact same thing, okay? so. So let, let's let's look down here to auto operating income. So they sold three million vehicles, and they made two point four billion dollars. All right, they made four point three million vehicles, so a four and a half x more than Tesla, and they made four point six billion. Tesla made four <laughs> made four x less than than GM. They made three x less than Ford. And yet they made um, essentially 100% more than what GM did, right? And they essentially made, call that 4X in, in uh, operating income than what Ford did, right? Because if I multiply this by four, that gives me about 10 billion. Um, if I multiply this by two, that gives me about 9 billion. So, so yeah, I mean, 
you tell me who you want to be. Like, sure, it's cool to have all these sales and Tesla will eventually get there. But I mean, again, who would you rather be? And again, if you look at this auto operating income per vehicle sold. So in other words, how much income did you make for each vehicle you sold? Well, Tesla's making $10,000 per vehicle they sell. GM barely breaks $1,000. Ford, not even near a thousand or 770 something dollars so so this is this is what people miss this is the thing people don't understand so yes tesla may may make less vehicles than all of them but that is not the metric that matters the metric that matters is what you see down here auto operating income this is the number that matters right this is this is this is everything and this is what people don't understand so you could argue, you know, people say, oh, Tesla's bigger than all of them combined. Okay, well, let's just look at it. GM and Ford combined. If you add in their auto operating income, 2.4, 4.6, that's still less than what Tesla has done. And you're combining them. So you start to really understand this picture. Now, everybody can say, oh, but there's one-offs here, right? I mean, let me just exit out of this. But with Ford, okay, well, they, they took some hits because of Rivian and um, getting rid of uh, Argo AI and, and GM had these hiccups and supply chain issues. And look, you can make all the excuses you want because I can do the same thing with Tesla. But the point is the numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. So who do you want to be? The person who's working all these extra hours and making less money or the people that are working less hours and making the most money? Because that's who Tesla is. Tesla is making at this point the least amount of vehicles out of them but they are making all the all the profits and it's only a matter of time before tesla gets to the level of ford and gm and then what happens right i mean if they're doing call it 10 billion on a million vehicles what happens when they get to 2 million to 3 million to 4 million right like this is where these numbers really start to get nutty and then we 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 add on top of that fsd beta Where's FSD beta going to be this time next year, right? Will we have the Cybertruck out there? Will we have a RoboTaxi announcement? Will we have a $25,000 vehicle announcement? Where's Tesla Energy going to be? What will Tesla AI Day Part 3 look like, right? Like, this is the narrative people are missing. Now, again, the company, I keep saying, is strong. Even though there are these rumors and these talks about issues in China, listen, we've been hearing this for so long. We've been hearing this ever since um, we had that protester at, uh, at that event who jumped on top of the car, right? There's a reputation issue with Tesla in China. Oh, there's a demand issue with Tesla in China. Yet every week we get record numbers of deliveries uh, in China. So so show me, show me where I'm wrong here, where the disconnect is. Now, maybe over time, there will be less buyers because the Chinese economy is really hurting. Zero COVID isn't, you know, helping anybody. And so, so that's possible. But, but then we look at Tesla's biggest competitor in, in China, that's BYD. And they are essentially forecasting an increase in prices for their vehicles come the new year when the China credits expire. So if that's the case, I don't think we're going to see any drop in price for Tesla. I think they're going to hold. I think they're going to be able to sell every vehicle they can. They can go into new markets. They can export more they want. And I think they're going to start building SNX in, uh, in Shanghai eventually. And now on top of that, we also have, um, we have rumors about now a South Korea gigafactory. So, According to Elon, we were going to get an announcement before the end of the year of a new factory. So maybe that's going to be in South Korea. Maybe it'll be in the UK. Maybe it'll be in Canada. Maybe it'll be all three. Who knows? I like the idea of South Korea. It diversifies away from China because I don't think Tesla should be in any one place as a as a like monopoly, if you will. They, they should be able to pivot to other places in case something were to happen that we don't want. But my point is Tesla is strong. Tesla is in such a good position. The stock, maybe not so much. The stock can fluctuate based on drama and rumors. I mean, right, what was the most recent one we are hearing with, with Elon? He's distracted. He's pulling people off of FSD beta to go and work at Twitter. All this drama. Meanwhile, we've gotten more updates for beta than we 
at, at a faster clip than we have had since before Elon was at Twitter. Elon's at Twitter. We get FSD beta wide release. As far as I'm concerned, the most bullish thing for FSD beta right now tends to be Elon working at Twitter. So, you know, it's a coincidence. Doesn't mean one correlates to the other. Obviously, I'm, I'm you know, joking here, being sarcastic. But the point is, Elon can, he's a product guy. He's an engineering guy. He's not the one that's actually there doing all of the work, right? He goes where the problems are. And now that Twitter's part of it, Twitter is the problem. And he's going to iterate on that pretty quickly, that is my guess. So, look, the things, are, things are pretty great. I think things are going to be fine. I think we'll probably see CPI come down again. We'll probably see the Fed drop the 50 base point. Wide release. Hopefully, that gets some good attention. If not, Tesla's going to destroy Q4 uh, deliveries and earnings. And then we're also going to have... Um, an announcement hopefully with uh one of the factories two factories three factories who knows my point is even though things feel bleak even though the stock is just not doing what we want it to do and we all would love to at least be able to get back into the 300s 350 you know something that's rational where it should be we'll get there it'll happen it's a matter of time it's really undervalued we're seeing that across the board so believe in the company Think about the long term. Keep that as your sight. Don't let this noise distract you. Don't let it. Don't let this noise put you in a position where you miss out on the bigger opportunities that will happen. Because eventually the stock will run. We don't know what will trigger it. It could be anything that triggers it. But next year is extremely exciting, extremely bullish, and all the bullish stuff that happened this year, we have not seen that reflect in the stock at all yet. So. That's going to be very exciting. And we haven't heard much out of Austin. We haven't ha heard much out of Berlin. We haven't heard much about the 4680 batteries. But you know that these things are working. And you know that they're iterating on it. So, again, next year is, is going to be a major year for Tesla. All right. We're going to leave it there. I hope you guys enjoy your Thanksgiving. Again, if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, you know, you might as well leverage this as an opportunity to reflect on your life and all the good things. You know, not saying ignore and forget about the bad things. It's good to know they're there, but sometimes we need to put more focus on the good things and then we can get back to work on the issues we have and we'll figure out on, you know, how to how to solve those problems and we'll work hard to do that to get better as people, as individuals. All right, I'm going to leave it there. Do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring that bell. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I hit this a lot. I'm not going to edit any of this out because I got to go upstairs and check on the turkey. Love you all. Peace.